Hey, it's Bushido 3D here, and in this video we'll be looking at this 3D printed fan duct mod. And later in the video we'll be installing it on our Robo 3D R1 Plus. So, stick around. And just a heads up, in this video the time lapse will be at the end of the video so we can go smoothly from the review of the print right into installation. And now we're in the Thingiverse page for the Robo 3D R1 no screw fan duct for the stock hot end. So that is the hot end that comes installed or pre-installed on the Robo 3D R1 Plus printer. So this is not necessarily the fan tuck that you want to be printing if you have an E3D V6 upgrade on your R1 Plus or some other extruder that you install yourself. So let's take a look at a couple of the pictures of it. You can see that it is, made, it is definitely supposed to be a functional print and not necessarily the most beautiful, but all we need it for is functionality. You can download it right here. It's a file size of four megabytes. Now let's go over to Cura 2.5 so I can show you a little bit of a special setting that I use for the slicing and printing of this model. Now I used Cura 2.5 for this specific instant and for this print because I've been noticing lately that I've gotten a lot better results and better first layers, better quality out of my prints and out of the printer. And I also like how you can tinker with and adjust a lot more settings than with the slightly more simplistic original Cura. So on that note, I did change a lot of things that Sometimes you would change, sometimes you normally wouldn't change for this print because I wanted it to, to be a very solid, strong, and durable part. So I did use a 0.2 millimeter layer height and the shell doesn't really matter to the wall thickness, wall line count, because I used a 100% infill density, so solid, durable part. Infill pattern, I just decided to go with anything because it didn't really matter because it's 100% infill, so I did tetrahedral. Our material is... PLA, so I, it's actually the specific Hatchbox Dark Blue PLA, so I decided to print it at 200C, which is what I usually use, and our build plate temperature was at 50C, and I was about to say 200C, you know, that totally wouldn't be unsafe having a major surface that could give you really, really bad burns. Moving on, our speed could be, or would be, was, will be, was, 40 millimeters per second for this print and that actually worked out really well but I wanted it to be a little bit slower than my standard 50, 60 or even 45 because I wanted the support material to print uh, or come out very nice and clean so that I could have good uh, geometry and smooth transitions on the inside of the model and on all these red areas, the overhangs, so that I could have uh, good airflow inside of the fan duct. Then I had the travel speed of a 150 millimeters per second. Support, of course, I enabled it and put it everywhere. Zigzag, which is a stronger pattern. Build plate adhesion, of course, I used hairspraying and that produced an incredible first layer. Now, Cure 2.5 has been known, or at least for my printer, to produce pretty accurate estimates. So it did actually take around 4 hours 20 minutes, like 20, maybe 5 minutes uh, around that up or down, I think it was 415, and it took 11.90 meters of material and it was exactly 35 grams. That's really cool. Now let's get on to a quick overview of this print and then we'll get to the installation. The printer is now on, so let's go ahead and go into prepare. Under prepare, we're going to go to move axis and move one millimeter and then move the Z axis. We're going to move this up until we can fit a camera underneath it and comfortably have enough space to fit a screwdriver underneath the fan area on the back side too. You'll see it in just a second. Next, let's go ahead and unplug the printer and then rotate it 180 degrees so we can have access to the back where the fan is.
And to remove these screws underneath here in the corners of the fan, we will be using this small, pretty standard screwdriver that comes in many drone kits and other robotics kits, so they're pretty easy to find. Or you can just use a even more standard screwdriver, like this one that came with the Robo 3D R1 Plus. So I'm going to start off by removing or detaching this cable right here. I hope you can see that. It seems like it would be a little bit hard to see, but... And then I'm going to remove these screws. We successfully on plug this wire so now let's go ahead and loosen the screws to release the fan. That's one. And now let's go ahead and remove the other one. And there we go. So now let's go ahead and install the fan completely. So we're going to take this fan and orient the label side inwards. Slide it in this side slot first. Like so. Make sure that this cable is on the upper right side because uh, it will just be long enough to reach its connector. Now I'm going to turn on the printer and then move our setup farther down so it'll be easier to see. I moved the whole setup about 80 millimeters downwards, so now let's turn off the printer so we can rewire some stuff. Okay, well, first let's just clip this whole fan duct setup onto the back of the printer. It's going to go right here and just clip into place. Alright, that looks pretty good. Let me just move it over a little bit. And we should be good in just a minute. Well, as you can see, that is perfectly in place. And now let's just reconnect the wires. There we go, finally got it. That took a little bit of stretching and I had to move some wires up here, but it works fine and there's a good strong connection right here. It's a little bit hard to see, but here I'll zoom in on that connection. It is this one right here. It's a little bit taut, but it will work just fine. So now let's turn the printer back around and let's test this fan. And in case you were wondering, we will not be needing these screws again, but keep them because they might just come in handy to have around sometime. So to manually control the fan, we're going to go under control and then go under temperature and then go to fan speed. And for now, I'm going to show you what 50 looks like. Let's see up here. Let me get it spinning again. There we go. It's produces a decent amount of air for a fan its size and then if we put that up to 100 so we'll back under control temperature fan speed switch it to just about 100 then we get a bit more airflow and the fan by itself produces pretty decent airflow but the orientation that it was in, that it comes in installed on the printer, is not the best, so this fan duct actually does really help. As you can see, it directs all the air towards the hot end right here, 
and it's not very far away and just to show you it does clear the build plate which is a great thing so to prove the clearance let's go into prepare and then hit auto home and let's see how it does it's gonna break that little piece of filament that is hanging out of the nozzle but otherwise it's good it is about two three millimeters clear which passes the test Well, I hope you enjoyed the time lapse, and I know this video has been a little bit long, but I just wanted to get everything out there, the overview and the installation, so you can replicate all of this at home on your R1 or R1 Plus printer or other similar printers. So on that note, I would say that that's about it for this video on the printing and installation of this awesome new fan duct, and I'm really excited to test this out on future prints to see really how much it does improve the quality. And of course, I'll be doing a video on that on fan speeds with this new duct. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a big thumbs up down below. Also, if you have any thoughts or suggestions, leave me a comment. I would love it. And please remember to subscribe to this channel as it helps out a lot. Thanks for watching. Go make something awesome. And I will see you in the next video.